Hello everybody, my name is Olga. I'm the founder of Honest Business, Honest TV Network, and welcome to Honest Conversations. As you know, I go live sometimes alone, but sometimes I have some wonderful guests who have really a lot to share. And today is a very special day. Today we're gonna meet a productivity coach and a best-selling author. Yes, you heard it right. Michelle Forsyth, we DM'd a little bit, we exchanged some emails, we got connected through her PR agent, and I really cannot wait to have this amazing conversation because I know for sure that we're gonna learn a lot today. And as an overwhelmed entrepreneur or a freelancer, as I'm sure you are and I am, we have a lot to learn. So I'm super excited and please welcome, I will and Michelle, right now, please welcome the superstar of today's Forsyth. Let's hope that internet works. That's usually a drill. Hi, Michelle. Welcome. Hello. Welcome, welcome. So Thank nice you. to see you in person, finally. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you so much for having me here, Olga. Absolutely. And you know, it is a joy. And I was reading about you and I was reading about your book. First and foremost, congratulations on Thank all you. your accomplishments. You are a superstar. <laughs> Thank you. Um, before we get to, into things, I wanted to just say m my thoughts and prayers out for everyone affected by Hurricane Ida. It's just so devastating. I know some pers people personally affected and I just hope everyone is safe. Absolutely. And that was actually my first question. Are you okay? Because I think we have to start any conversation these days with, are you okay? So are you okay? Yes, I am perfectly safe. I, I live in Alberta, Canada, so I'm nowhere near it, fortunately. But Amazing. Perfect. We're here in New York. I'm in New York. We went swimming. And weirdly, we were not even notified about it until we were in the middle of it. So, you know, like usually they kind of like scare you and then it's not needed here. They skipped all that. I'm like, okay, <laughs> now we have an alarm. So get out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Speaking of productivity, that was not productive. Um, <laughs> but um, for those who perhaps don't follow you yet, can you share some words about you, about what you do? And of course, to mention your book as well. Absolutely. So um, I focus on productivity coaching, business coaching, that kind of thing. I started out uh, freelancing in 2016. I started out more as like a technical virtual assistant. So I was transferring my skills as an executive assistant and, and working in IT departments and that. And my, my wife was already working in the online world. So she introduced me to this whole digital marketing space. And I got, uh, I got super excited about it. And we started working together. And, and that's really how that freelancing journey began for me. And it was the thing that has been really interesting for me has been it's been so much fun to learn. I love learning. It's just, I, I, I hate being bored. I just always want to be challenging myself. And, and uh, it's one of my favorite things about freelancing and entrepreneurship is there's always new stuff to learn. There's always so much to uh, grow and expand. And so I was able to just transfer my skills and just expand on them. And this just kind of been an evolution over the last five years. And uh, with COVID and um, some things related to that, uh, I changed gears and I started doing more coaching in addition to the VA stuff. I kind of step back from it, but I've always loved both. So I was just like, well, let's just do both. Like, you know? <laughs> so I, I love what I do because I'm really, my thing is making sure that is helping people move their business forward in whatever capacity. Sometimes I'm doing it for you and sometimes I'm just guiding you and helping you with that, with that, that journey. And it's just always so much fun for me. Absolutely. And you know, um, I talked to several entrepreneurs and many of them have found something new to learn or something new to do during the pandemic and lockdown. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what identifies us as entrepreneurs, freelancers. We always are go-getters, right? We mm -hmm. learn something and actually evolve and not accepting those 
sometimes sad and rough circumstances like for instance lockdowns and people losing businesses but um how did you decide on actually concentrating on productivity well because I found like I just naturally am an organizer I just naturally figure things out and what really got me thinking about how I could help people in different ways was when, when I started writing my book my original mm -hmm. concept for my book was just sharing my journey of living with chronic fatigue syndrome because I've had um, CFS since I was about 15 years old and the first two years I slept 18 to 22 hours a day uh, yeah it was it was not fun um I had to drop out of high school because obviously it's hard to fit in school when you're sleeping right. that much time <laughs> so when I was first diagnosed they told me that um I would be better by the time I was 19 that I was just gonna my symptoms would be all magically gone and and uh so oh, when wow. I hit yeah <laughs> like poof, you're you're all good now you can start living again so I was okay with that like I was a really good student but I, I I was like okay I can just go back to school or whatever when I'm 19 I'm fine with that I'll just finish the last two years no big deal um but when I was 19 my symptoms were still they were better I wasn't sleeping quite as much but I was still nowhere near in a position to be like working or going to school or anything like that so that that is when I started to develop some depression and I started to to um, start to have to realize that I was going to be living with this for the rest of my life mm -hmm. and then when I was 28 I had my first major breakup and I had to get a job and I had to figure things out and I, um, I got a full time job, but I had to really figure out how to manage my symptoms. And my full time job was working in an office, I was like running the office. So it was I went with my natural skills, like I'm good at organizing, I'm good at administration. I'm, this was in 2001. So computers were a thing, but not like I didn't even have internet in my office. Like, when I first started, it was such a different time then. Um, so the the whole like everything I've done in my entire life and in my entire career has been about finding ways to get things done in the most efficient way and to maximize my energy to to uh, use momentum to get things done. So it was just through like having conversations with my clients and when you're when you're working with somebody as a VA as a virtual assistant the biggest thing they have is they're overworked they're overwhelmed and they don't know what to do right so it was just a it's just a natural conversation for me like how can we organize your life better how can we organize your business better and then it just kind of it just was a very natural thing to, to progress into no. the coaching it's absolutely actually um, amazing to learn about your journey and um, to hear it from such authentic uh, perspective, you know, because a lot of people would say, hey, you know, I'm the best at that. So that's why I'm concentrating. But really, because you found the solution that worked for you, right? Mm -hmm. And when you have that limited time, of course, you have to be super efficient because we are you know, a normal case scenario. And if you watch the news and there's people, there floods and some have fire, and then there's war. And you think like, and here I am, you know, sad about that I'm having just 24 hours in the day. Look at them, right? Yeah. So, and as they say, if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person, right? You yes. have enough time. So yes. efficiency is super important. So um, how did you decide to, um, actually pursue it in terms of uh, teaching people? Do you, did you create methods that worked for you? Um, you know, anything you would like to share without oversharing? Because, of course, <laughs> you have your clients, but just to get a perspective. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Client. It really started, I started working with, um, I started working with my mom. She's, she, she, I've done virtual assistant work with her and she, she was struggling to get her projects done. And she, and there's like, I can, I can't do everything for you, right? Like there's things that you have to do yourself. So we started working together and I said to her, like, what's your number one goal? What do you want to accomplish? And at that point she wanted to write a book. 
So we started working on that. So we started, uh, that was the ultimate goal. And uh, we just started meeting on a regular basis and, you know, progressing. And her book was actually published um, in December. So, yeah. So it kind of... Yeah, yay. Amazing. <laughs> we we have a unique relationship that we're mother and daughter, but we can work together and, and it's it it works just fine. So it it just it's just like, you know, you see a need and you fill it. Like if you can if you can answer the questions that people are asking, then then that's where you that's where you end up. And that's exactly what happened with me. Mm. Amazing. And so you mentioned you work with your wife, you work with your mom. So what's the secret um, about working with family? Because I know a lot of people (laughs) create companies and they can't kind of leave the work when they want to watch TV. It's still work and then it's everything kind of mixed. So do you separate work from household or is it all kind of like intertwined? It's intertwined, but we also have, we have boundaries too. Um, like, so for example, like working with my mom as, as, um, her being my client, like we have business meetings during the week. Like we FaceTime on Sundays. That's our family. That's our weekly chat and maybe a little bit of work gets in there. But for the most part, like we'll have like a, a, a meeting over zoom and have like that business conversation. So it, it is about setting boundaries. It can be, it's not highly recommended for everyone because you, <laughs> it's, it's much better to have a really good relationship with the family member and uh as far as with my mom with my wife we oh it has not always been perfect I mean you know we have our styles and we have uh she's got her things that she's excellent at and we've gone through some rough patches sometimes with our business and we've had some pretty good conversations but we have really good communication and Mm -hmm. you know we have the one thing that we always are with each other is we're always going to be honest with each other and, mm-hmm. and fair to each other. And we can say like, uh, because I am uh, sometimes on the more creative side and she's much more analytical and she, she's actually coming to realize that she's creative just in a different way. But we have sometimes like if she's looking at my writing or something, I'll say, okay, so you need to be really gentle with me because I'm very emotional about this particular thing. Right. So, you know, treat me with kid gloves. And if I get upset, it's just because I'm very attached to it. So, but I want to hear what you have to say. And I mean, she loves my writing and she loves what I do. So it's, it's not a problem, but you know, like it's a sensitive thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Because, you know, as they say, um, nobody will care as much about your work as you do because it's your baby, yeah. your work, right? Even yeah. people who love you the most, they mm-hmm. don't have that attachment, right? So, mm-hmm. um, but how do you stay personally? How do you stay productive? Because, um, you know, I'm sure you're contacted by entrepreneurs who are all over the place, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you need to get there <clears throat> together and uh, you talk to everybody who's perhaps emotional and perhaps yeah. scared and mm-hmm. all the drama. So how do you actually stay focused and stay productive in your own way, despite everything? Yeah. So I'm, I do a few different things. Like one of the things that I'm, I'm a big fan of lists and just taking stock on things. Um, Like when, if we're starting something new, I'm working with a new client, like we make like a list of all the different things that they want to work on. And just like that first conversation with my mom, what do you want to accomplish first? What is your primary goal? So what is it that you want? What is your focus? What is your, your, your biggest pain point? And I like to start with quick wins. So if we can solve one, one, take one thing off your plate that's really bugging you, let's start with that. Let's work on that and just go from there. And you just build from, from those. Um, yeah, and it's just, I also recognize the emotional component, like we're in business and as much as we want to be like focused on business and everything else, just like writing and just like anything, it's our, it's our baby. It's, it's, it's our thing that we want to do or we want to do more of. And so 
recognizing that and acknowledging that uh, can make a much better conversation. Absolutely. And, you know, I started as a professional athlete. So there were coaches who were super um, clear in their instructions, but they lacked uh, empathy. And so... Mm -hmm. I couldn't connect to them because I felt they don't understand me, right? Mm -hmm. They really treat me as that, you know, a student uh, number, whatever. Or if you go to university, you see that too, right? So, and perhaps uh, like people go to school and they love the subject where they love the teacher the most, right? And it all connects to empathy. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people are choosing coaches and looking mm -hmm. for coaches and there's life coaches. I still don't know what that means. Um, you know, I don't uh, think anyone coach, really does. <laughs> exactly, right? So uh, there's a lot of noise and there's mm -hmm. a lot of people who claim to be everything and anything. So um, as a professional coach, as a bestseller, right, as mm -hmm. a success in this area, what people need to look for when they're trying to select a coach or trying to um, get to know somebody and see if that's a good fit? I think the number one thing is, can you talk to each other? Can you communicate? And um, can you also make sure like that you know their style, like the coach's style and that it fits with you? Like I'm, I'm very empathetic, but I can also be pretty direct. Like, you know, if, if you say you're going to do something and we meet up in two weeks later and you haven't done it, I'm going to ask you why. You know, um, so it, it's you need to make sure that you can connect with that person. You can really have those honest conversations and you can you can be yourself and they can be themselves too. the coach can be themselves and you can just like move forward together. Like it, coaching, I find like especially with like business or productivity or whatever the case is like it's a real, it's a relationship. It's not, sometimes it can feel like therapy or something like that. But I, I am very, because I'm very process driven, I'm very task driven, like, I want to make sure that you are moving forward. So we will talk about like, why this is important to you and getting to the heart of that. But I'm also going to make sure that like, you're really taking action. <laughs> Yeah, because it's it's kind of like, you know, uh, you can talk so much about it, but if you don't do it, then don't blame your coach, right? Yeah, Because <laughs> exactly. action has to come from uh, the person who's actually mm -hmm. the student in this case. And um, you mentioned your um, CFS, right? Chronic mm -hmm. um, Fatigue um, Syndrome. How did you, um, you know, because when I talk to people who, have faced uh, a dark moment when they mm -hmm. had a diagnosis, when they heard either about themselves or somebody they love the most. And um, the moment when they realize that they can turn that into their strength mm -hmm. and so use it as a fundamental basis for their success, which uh, they ultimate are, ultimately are and you are. So um, can you describe that moment when you realize I not, I shouldn't be the victim, I can actually use it as my superpower? Yeah, I, yeah, I can talk about that. So it's kind of interesting because uh, my wife and I have talked about this a lot because um, she's transgender and she so she went through like her entire life feeling like she was in the wrong body and like all of that pain and that and it wasn't really until I was probably in my mid 30s when I re like got mad that I had CFS. <laughs> so, because I, like, like she said to me, like, how, like you, like you slept for so long and like, how could you, how, like, why aren't you more upset about that? <laughs> and I said, well, first of all, when I was sleeping, I was too tired to notice. Like, <laughs> you know, like it you just- You don't know any better. Mm -hmm. No, you know, I, I remember going back to school and uh, kids were talking, this was the first summer and, and the first year trying to go back and, and kids were talking about, you know, what they had done over the summer. And I was like, huh, <laughs> I just like, I didn't realize that I had slept the entire summer. And so it wasn't really until I actually started to be able to manage my symptoms. I started to be more active in that. And then that's, 
that's kind of when it started to hit me that I was like, oh, this is different than other people. Like other, like other people feel tired, but it's a different kind of fatigue. Like it's, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, and they don't have to worry so much about man- managing their energy and all that. And so that, that kind of changed for me. And then when I started writing my book, that's when I realized, like when I made that decision to write my book, that was when I was like, okay, I can actually use what I've learned to help people specifically because other people I had conversations I was working at a job at that time and and other people were experiencing the same things and I was giving them suggestions based on what I do for myself mm-hmm. and they were like oh that's really helpful and I was like well then let's write that down you know <laughs> so it, it really just again came from having conversations with people and just wanting to share what I've learned from it. And so you realize that actually helping people mm-hmm. is uh, another outlet. And yes. I think that it's so important, especially now, when people are facing all sorts of struggles, um, either physically, emotionally, financially, to mm-hmm. see that you actually, if you will concentrate on offering help, that help will be sent to you, whether you believe in mm-hmm. God or universe, higher power, but it is always coming from giving, right? Yes. So um, can you tell us more about your book? Um, first, where can we find it? But also, who is this for? Who do you want to help with mm-hmm. this book and um, what to expect? Sure, absolutely. So it's not for sale yet. It's not, I, I'm still in the editing final stages, but it should be out on in early January, I'm hoping. You can actually pre-order it, though, um, from my website, stepsteppick.com. The book is called Step Step Pick. Uh, so it is for, I, I originally was writing it for people who live with chronic illness or people who, um, have family who live with chronic illness, but it's really for, uh, for anyone, especially entrepreneurs who are trying to figure out how they can, uh, get things done in a more efficient way. It's how to, ironically, like it's how to prepare for, um, stuff happening because my wife um, has some other health issues and we had to go to the emergency room a lot uh, when we first got married. Um, she's doing much better now, but we had to go to the emergency room a lot. So like we have like a little kit in our purses of like snacks and things to back up or or like to charge our devices and you know and extra power blocks and just and we have stuff on our our phones to watch movies or listen to books and so just different things like that just to prepare in your life and get yourself organized and so that it's things like natural disasters if you have some warning you can be ready like you know where your pet carrier is you know you you can just grab the stuff that you need things like that and and like practical stuff too on uh organizing your day like how to uh know what your schedule is and know what's happening in your in your life and and how to um pick a project and and all that and each chapter has has an activity for you to do so you can put whatever was in that chapter into practice and in into your life so there's like a worksheet for each chapter too that's amazing so you know as they say um stay ready so you don't have to get ready right <laughs> yeah and, that's uh, an awesome that's an awesome quote i love that and, and you know the the outcome of um you know whether you're fixing something or you're facing a tragedy the mm-hmm. outcome will depend on those first few moments after you realize you are in the doo-doo. What mm-hmm. you're doing, are you wasting time? What's your mentality? What's mm-hmm. your attitude about it? That mm-hmm. actually de- defines the outcome. Is it right or am I mistaken a little bit? No, I agree. I agree. Like our attitude affects, affects everything. And we can't control what happens to us, but we can control how we react to it. Mm. So if we are like, okay, this is happening. This is what I'm going to do. This is, I know how to deal with this. You know, um, that will make such a difference in your stress levels. Like it's much easier to cope with having to suddenly go to the hospital or having to go stay in a hotel. If you're like, oh, I'll just grab my stuff. I'm like, let's go. You know, it's not that big a deal. I mean, it's a big deal because that stuff is happening. 
but you can cope with it much easier when you have a little bit of prep already done. Absolutely. And you know, um, it is so important also, if we come back to coaching aspect, to connect with people who can understand you. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people have to shift what they do because of the circumstances. They lost the nine to five job, they want to um, get into business or they want to do freelancing. And so it's important to um, be coached by somebody who can um, actually, you know, put herself uh, into your shoes, right? Absolutely. So um, are you accepting new clients? Um, how can they contact you? And um, with what? Like any specific tasks? <laughs> Absolutely. So you can contact me on stepstepick.com. My email is michelle at stepstepick.com. I am taking new clients, uh, whether you're wanting to write a book, you need help with productivity, whatever the case is. I also am offering a VA training program with live coaching too, so a group training program. So uh, if you want to uh, start a VA business or as a side hustle or, or even a full-time thing, you know, I can help you with that. One-on-one uh, -on -one coaching or group coaching. Yeah, definitely. It's amazing. And so your website is step, step, pick. Dot yes. com, right? That's correct. So for those slow folks out there, stepstepick.com. <laughs> and of course, I mentioned that in the notes. And, um, you know, I think that our conversation is so timely today because a lot of people, I mean, here in New York, you can't even take a subway in some parts, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I hear that a lot of people lost, again, businesses now to natural disaster and all of that. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it is so important to see someone as an example, who can turn the circumstances into the superpower. Thank and, you. Uh, you do it perfectly well. So anything you would like to leave our audience with today? I would, I would say if you are thinking about a project or you're, you're wondering if, if it's something you should do, if you're thinking about it, then you should do it because it's in your head for a reason and it's worth taking the time. I, you can even do it in small increments. I wrote my book in 10 to 30 minutes a day. So you don't have to uh, like stop everything of what you're doing. You can still complete your project or your dream project and, and get it done. Amazing. And uh, once again, congratulations to your mom. Um, Thank you. Maybe you send some info and I posted about her book. Congratulations Absolutely. to you. <laughs> and um, the upcoming launch, maybe we can go live when it comes out. Perfect, um, yeah. So people can pre-order and say uh, warm greetings to your wife as well. And uh, um, I hope we all end this year on a high note and then we meet Agreed. when the book is out. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Olga. Thank you so much, everybody. Please follow Michelle. She, um, I will, of course, add your tag in the comments, in the uh, notes. So please go and uh, follow and follow. Do you, because when I was searching, I found your like business tag at something else. Is it also something we should follow too? Um, just, just follow, oh, just follow me on here, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> Okay, make it easy for you guys. Yeah. So please follow Michelle and uh, please support and we connect when your book is out. It was a pleasure. And uh, awesome. I didn't know we never talked before, but see guys, when you meet people and you have genuine connection, that's always the best. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Olga. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>